The warmest of greetings to you. Who are you? I am your storyteller, Chip. And if I told you that I was going to tell a story about a knight in shining armor, I bet you'd expect someone swinging a sword, defeating a dragon, and saving a princess. Somebody strong and clever and brave. Yeah, is that what you'd expect? Yeah. Well, the knight in this story was called Sir Fulladred. And he wasn't strong or clever or brave. In fact, he was weak and silly and fearful. Fortunately, someone had told him that if he wanted to be strong and clever and brave, all he needed to do was eat the heart of a dragon. But how was someone like Sir Fulladred, who was weak and silly and fearful, how was he ever going to eat a dragon's heart? Right at the start of this story, Sir Fulladred read books to find out what kind of dragons there were, and some of them he found really scary. There was the Demogorgon dragon, which was huge. It was bigger than an entire house with wings. And of course, it could breathe. Fire! But there was also a dragon in the book that was smaller than a cat. This was called the Yew Dragon, and it didn't breathe fire, it didn't even eat meat. It only ate nuts. And Sir Fulladred thought this was perfect. Here was a dragon he was definitely going to be able to capture and eat its heart so he could be strong and clever and brave. So he set out with a backpack to put the Yew Dragon in and a spoon so that he could cut out its heart. He didn't want to take a knife because that might be too dangerous. And off he went into the forest and he looked around for a tree with lots of nuts. And soon, sure enough, he saw a yew dragon asleep up there in a tree. And he climbed up into the tree, took out a neck, and caught hold of the U-Dragon and took it all the way back down and shoved it into his bag. And the U-Dragon woke up and said, oh, wait, oh, What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> and Sir Fulladred said, I've got you now. I'm going to eat your heart because then I will be strong and clever and brave. Right now, I am weak and silly and fearful. But once I've eaten your heart, I will be strong and clever and brave. Maybe the Yew Dragon has claws. The Yew Dragon looked up at Sir Fulladred and said, You really want to eat my heart? Sir Fulladred nodded. Ah! And the Yew Dragon said, And you're really weak and silly and fearful. And Sir Fulladred nodded his head. So the Yew Dragon said, No, oh, well, I really would like to help you. I really would like to let you eat my heart, but there's a little bit of a problem. What? What's that? asked Sir Fulladred. And the Yew Dragon said, you see, my heart isn't here. I left my heart at home. <laughs> Sir Fulladred was very upset about this. In fact, he was rather cross. He had come all this way and caught hold of a yew dragon just to eat its heart and become strong and clever and brave. But now it looked like he was going to stay weak and silly and 
fearful. So he asked the yew dragon, he asked him, tell me quickly, where is your home? Wow. And the yew dragon replied, well, it's at the edge of the forest, a tree at the edge of the forest. <laughs> well, that didn't sound like very far away. So Sir Full of Dread decided he was going to take the yew dragon home and get its heart. So he said, tell me quickly, which way to your home? And the yew dragon looked around and said, mm, that way. <laughs> so off went Sir Full of Dread with the yew dragon in his backpack going through the trees. And you can go through the trees as well if you like. And as he was going through the trees, he found lots of sticks getting in his eyes and, and poking him in the sides. Can you imagine that as you're going through the trees? Imagine being poked by all of these trees and ow! Some of them are very sharp as well and some of them had sap dripping off which was really sticky. So he was going through the oh, pokey and the uh, sharp and the uh, sticky trees and as he went he said to the yew dragon you told me just to go this way. You, you should have said go the pokey and, and sharp and sticky way. And the yew dragon said, oh, I am sorry, but you told me to tell you quickly. So off went Sir Full of Dread, still ugh, going through, that's it, ow, through those trees. And at last he came to the edge and he was really happy. So he said to the yew dragon, right, which one of these is your home? And the yew dragon said, oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean the edge of this forest. I meant the edge of that forest over there. And Sir Full of Dread saw that forest was miles away. He turned to the yew dragon and said, you, you told me it was the edge of the forest. You should have said it was the edge of another forest. Then I might have gone home to, to get some better shoes. And the yew dragon said, I'm sorry, you told me to tell you quickly. <sighs> well, Sir Full of Dread just said, fine, okay, no matter, we can do this. Tell me quickly, which is the way to your edge of that forest? And the yew dragon said, oh, that way. So off went Sir Full of Dread trudging across the grass. And you can do this too if you like, trudging across the grass. And as he was trudging, ooh, he found that the grass ah, ooh, was very brambly. Ah, ooh, yeah, uh, and, and there were stings as well. Ooh, uh, ow, ooh, and it was uh, ooh, getting ee, in, in between his toes because it was getting into his really bad shoes. Ah, and as he was going across, he said to the yew dragon, ah, you told me just to go this way. You, you should have said go the, ah, oh, the brambly and the uh, stingy uh, and the gritty way. And the yew dragon said, oh, I'm sorry, but you told me to tell you quickly. I'll use more adjectives next time. Ah, it's fine, said Sir Full of Dread. And they got to the edge of the grass and they came to a river. And Sir Full of Dread turned to the yew dragon and said, tell me quickly, which way do we go now? And the yew dragon said, through the river. <laughs> so off went Sir Full of Dread wading through the river. And you can do this as well if you like. But it was really, really cold. Show me how you would look if you were really, really cold. Ooh, you'd be shaking a bit, wouldn't you? Ooh, some of you are turning blue as well. That's incredible. Ooh, and not only that, but it was... Ooh, ooh, it was so wet. It was making his armour start to rust. Uh, so it was really hard to swim through it. And his feet were trudging through really gloopy mud. Can you make that sound too? And as he got to the other side of the river and came out, he was soaking wet, he was icy cold, and his 
feet were really, really heavy from all of the mud that was still stuck to them. And he said to the yew dragon, you told me to go through the river. You should have said, go through the freezing, wet and gloopy river. I'm sorry, said the yew dragon. You told me to tell you quickly. I'll use an expanded noun phrase next time. Well, Sir Fulladred said, ah, tell me quickly, which way do we go now? And the yew dragon said, across the sand. And so off went Sir Fulladred through the sand across the desert. And as he was walking across there, and you can walk with him if you like, it started to get really hot. Can you imagine how you would look like and feel if you were really, really hot? Oof. Very sweaty. And all of the sand was sticking to his wet armor. So it was getting really heavy. Oh, imagine walking across now with really heavy armor. Oh, you'd be getting really slow, wouldn't you? And as he kept going across, the sand was also really hot and he could feel his feet starting to hot up and scorching the bottom of his feet. The soles of his feet were getting warmer and warmer. Ah, 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 ah. And as he went across, he said to the yew dragon, oh, oh, you said, oh, go across, ow, the sand. Oh, you should have said, ow, go across, ah, the hot, ah, scorching, oh, heavy sand. And the yew dragon said, I'm sorry, you told me to tell you quickly. I'll use many more words next time. At last though, they got across the sand and by now, Sir Full of Dread, he was scratched, he was burnt, he was cold and his armor was heavy, weighing him down but he was at the edge of the forest. Soon he would get to eat the yew dragon's heart and then he would become strong and clever and brave. So he turned to the yew dragon and said, right, which one is your tree? And the yew dragon looked around and said, oh, that one. And when Sir Fulladred looked at that tree, he saw it going up and up, and up, and up, and up. And he said, you told me you lived in a tree at the edge of the forest. You should have told me you lived in the tallest tree at the edge of the forest. I might have bought some, some rope or a ladder if you told me that. But the yew dragon said, I'm sorry, you told me to tell you Quickly! Tell you quickly. Yes, I know, said Sir Full of Dread. And he put down the bag and started to climb the tree. And you can climb with him if you like. But remember, your armor is very, very heavy. So, uh, real straight. Uh, lift up and grab the next branch. Lift up and grab the next branch. Lift up and grab the next branch. Uh, Grab the next branch! <laughs> Snap! And down! <laughs> Sir Fulladred fell to the bottom of the tree, landing really, really hard and adding a bruise to all his woes. <laughs> and, and he was very, very upset. How would you look if you were upset? I can see some very upset faces in front of me now, just like Sir Full of Dreads. And Sir Full of Dread looked around at the Yew Dragon. And the Yew Dragon said to Sir Full of Dread, Oh, don't be upset. Why don't I go up and I'll bring my heart down to you? And Sir Full of Dread said, you, you do that for me? You do that for me. Oh, that would be really kind of you. And he let the yew dragon out of his bag. And the yew dragon climbed all the way up 
to the top of the tallest tree. And when it got up there, it called down, Ha ha! You really are weak and silly and fearful. <laughs> My heart's not really up this tree. It was inside me all this time. Everybody keeps their heart inside them, don't they? <laughs> He had tricked Sir Philodred, and Sir Philodred realised he sat down there at the bottom of the tree, realising he'd gone through all of those pokey sharp trees and across all of that brambly stingy grass and through that icy muddy river and across <laughs> that heavy scorching sand, all for nothing. And he You're sat down there and he cried, wah! cried so much wah! that wah! the armour around his neck began to rust even more. Wah! And he picked himself up wah! and said, I'm never going to be strong or clever or brave. I'll always be weak and silly and fearful. And off he went on a slow walk home. Oh, poor him. And the yew dragon that sat there at the top of the tree watching him go and really felt bad for poor Sir Philodred. I mean, don't get me wrong, the yew dragon didn't really want his heart to be eaten, but he also did feel a bit sorry for Sir Philodred, a bit sorry for tricking him so badly. Well, as the yew dragon watched him go, the land got darker. As the shadow of a huge dragon passed overhead, the Demogorg dragon. You remember that one? The one that's big as a house with wings. And as the Demogorg dragon flew over the U dragon, the U dragon looked up and had an idea. An idea popped into his head. And the U dragon called up to the Demogorg dragon. Demogorg dragon, I am so glad you are here. The Demogorg dragon swooped down to get closer to the U dragon and said, Why, little dragon, what's wrong? Can I help? And the U dragon said, Oh, yes, great Demogorg dragon, it's terrible. There is a knight who has been going around killing dragons to eat their hearts. His name is Sir Philodred. You have to do something about him. I kill his heart. And the Demogorg dragon said, I will end him. Which way did he go? Tell me which way he went. I will find him. I will burn him. And I will eat him. Heart. And the yew dragon said, Oh, thank you, great Demogorg dragon. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's so good you are going to help because Sir Philodred, he has already killed two Demogorg dragons and, and he really needs someone to teach him a lesson. Well, when the Demogorg dragon heard that, he asked two Demogorg dragons, you say? He's already killed two Demogorg dragons. The yew dragon said, Yep, yeah, that's right. And, and he went that way. Hmm, <laughs> said the Demogorg dragon. Well, that's funny because I'm, I'm not going that way right now. I'm actually going that way. I'm about to go on holiday, but I will sort out this Sir Fuller Dread. If he's ever coming back this way, then, then you make sure you let me know. You might need to send me a postcard, because, like I said, I'm going on holiday, but, but do let me know, and I will teach this Sir Fuller Dread a lesson, yes. And with that, the Demogorg Dragon spread his wings and started flying off away from Sir Fullerdred. 
And of course, the Demogorg dragon didn't know that the Yu dragon had played a trick on him. So as he was flying over the forest, he kept saying to the other animals, have you heard about Sir Fulladred, the knight who has killed two Demogorg dragons? And the animals started whispering that to each other as well. The rabbits whispered it to the squirrels, who whispered it to the birds, and it spread all through the forest, all the way back to the city. You can do that if you like. You can whisper to someone next to you all about Sir Fulladred. He's killed two Demogorg dragons. And by the time Sir Fulladred got back to his home city of Camelot, he found all of the people there waiting with banners, waving and welcoming him home, saying, welcome back, brave Sir Fulladred. Welcome back, clever Sir Fulladred. Welcome back, strong Sir Fulladred. And Sir Fulladred had no idea why they all thought that he was strong and clever and brave. But he was not going to argue with them. He was very happy to let people call him strong and clever and brave. He was very happy to take all of the money that the king gave him for being a strong, clever and brave knight and killing two demagogue dragons. And with some of that money, he was very clever. He got a teacher to help him become better at swinging a sword. So he really did become strong. He got another teacher to help him become better at doing his reading and his maths. So he became very clever. And with some of that money, he bought some nuts and took them into the forest. And what do you think he was going to do with <laughs> those nuts? Give it to a baby dragon. I love going on that quest with Sir Fulladred. The cleverness of the U-Dragon combined with his silliness makes it hilarious. But you know, I really want to know what you thought of that story. So please look for where it says review and follow the instructions to do just that. Let me know what you thought of that story. And while you're there, why not have a go at our epic challenge? If you send your creations to me, you never know. I could be telling a story just for you and your family in a live video call. Now, you've probably noticed I have a guitar in front of me. This is my friend Tails, and together we tell a story of another very clever and helpful dragon. If you are an epic explorer, you can enjoy that now as your bonus story. But if you'd like to become an epic explorer, head to fablespodcast.co.uk. Right now, though, it only remains for me to say cheerio, and I hope to hear your story soon. So, cheerio, and I hope to hear your story soon. <laughs>